In this video, we're going to be packing a lot into API hacking. We're going to look at several different ways to get information disclosure if you're doing a bug bounty program, and then also a way to fuzz for API endpoints, and then maybe even use those endpoints to gain access to the server, such as creating a username and a password, and then signing into the actual program and having access to files that we shouldn't be able to access. And we're also not going to cover a lot of API endpoint enumeration because I cover that in other videos as well. And so I'm going to link all my other API videos down in the description so if you're curious after this video you can go and check those out but this is a standalone video and I'm going to cover as much as I can without going into too much detail so we're going to look at a JSON web token and I also have a video for that down in the description but enough of that let's go ahead and jump into it all right so here we are I've gone ahead and ran the nmap scan and if you're doing bug bounties you're probably going to want to run it something like this you want to output all of the formats which is going to give you this information down here and then I I like to run the dash F or at least tell people to run the dash F if they are new and they are running in map on bug bounty programs because the dash F is going to run for you at the top 100 ports, which is going to save you from having any issues. And just in case you want to run really slow, you can run a dash T1 or a T2 and that will slow down the in-map scan for you. Then you won't have to worry about knocking on the doors of your target too quickly and you can slow down the in-map scan. But anyway, that is how I like to run the in-map scan if I am on a bug bounty program. And if not, I would just come right here and just run AP-P and then that will hit all ports. So here is the in-map scan. We see port 22 and then we see port 80. And this UV corn right here, we can check this out by copying it and pasting it in here and running it. And it's going to tell us what it does. It's a web server impl implementation for Python. And I think there's actually a G, yeah, right here, G unicorn right here that is very similar, both ran with Python. So knowing this, when we scroll down and look at this, we can see that we're receiving back a JSON, which means we're probably dealing with an API. And we can come up here and actually visit that port 80 and it will give us our response. And we receive back this JSON, which means we're running with an API. So in previous videos, I've shown you how to fuzz APIs and we'll, I'll show you again just real quickly. So what we would do if you were going to fuzz an API, we can just use fuff, which is automatically in the Kali tools. So we would run a fuff dash U for our URL and we'll say HTTP. And then we want 10, 10, 11, 161 and then you can fuzz right here the api just like this and then we can run a word list and we'll run user share word list and i think it's derb and then we'll run common.txt and i think that's oh we forgot to put in the word fuzz and we want to fuzz right after well, we're fuzzing right here we're going to fuzz for api so we'll run this fuzz and it should tell us pretty quickly that we have this API right here. And so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on fuzzing because I've already made a video on it. But so we have this API right here. So what you do is come up here, hit slash API, and you see that we have this V1 right here. If you didn't receive anything back, you could actually just take this API and you could come back in here and run this again and just type in API and then fuzz what comes after the API just like this and see if you can find the V1, but we're not gonna do that. So we can just come in here and now we can say V1 and it's gonna tell us we have this user and admin. So one of the things I would love to check for if I saw this is I would just come in here and see if there's anything for admin. It says we're not authenticated. And so this tells me that we could possibly try to create an account and sign up as an admin if we could intercept the request in burp, but that's not the direction of the box. And so it says we're not authenticated, so we can try user. And it says the user is not found, but we know it is there because we had the admin. So what you can do is take this right here and go back to your fuzzer and we can type in API V1 and then user and then fuzz what comes after the, after user and see what we can pull back and it says we are pulling back a bunch i'm guessing that these are just ids so if we come up here and say slash one it tells us that we have an email right here and if we run a two we'll probably get back a different email 
Nope, it says null. Okay, so I decided to add in a little update here because I forgot to mention this. If you're in a bug bounty program and you're able to pull down emails, even the admin email, and if there were other users on here, you'd be able to use something other than this, just this two right here, and you'd be able to pull down emails, this could be an information disclosure and you would want to report this. So we're just gonna get back information. So we actually know by doing this that we have an email right here of admin at HTB, and so we know that this is an actual user, but we can come back in here and I'm actually going to just run this and we'll sort out this fuzz by the size. So we'll just type in fuff dash F. That was not what I wanted. I wanted dash H, but it looks like it actually pulled it down for us anyway. And right here we want to run this, this dash MS so that we can match the HTTP response size. So we don't want to see this. Actually, we're going to use this MR right here. So we can come back up here, dash MR, and I think it was four was the right size. Okay, and we also want to run with a 104. And now if it comes back with anything positive, we should be able to see it. Okay, sometimes our tools don't always work for us and we have to go and do some manual testing. So we're gonna go ahead and do this now. So we know we have these this user endpoint right here and we wanna know what comes after this. One of the things that we should always check for is a login and we see that we have a valid login page and we can also check for like a sign up or you could go to GitHub and see if there are other endpoints than just sign up. But we see this works here. So we'll go ahead and catch this in burp and have a look at it and we'll send it over to the repeater tab and we can turn this off. Okay, so one of the first things we want to do is just send this and see what we get back. And it's the same thing we've seen over here and we get back this 422 unprocessable, unprocessable entity. And now we can change this request method right here and send it and see if we get something different back and it just says we need a field required. So what we can do is just try to add in a user and see what happens. So we can just make a user, just say user, and this is gonna have to have quotes around it. So we can just take this user and we'll make up a user and we'll call it phdsec and then we can close this off and send it and it's not gonna work. And I remember the first time I did this box, this was a nightmare for me. You're gonna wanna copy this and save it somewhere. I'm just gonna save it in a different URL over here so we can come back and grab it later. And now that we're over here, it tells us the value is not a valid dictionary and it is because of this right here. So you can just delete this all together and we'll see if this works for us. So if we send this, we now get a different JSON response back right here, and it tells us we need a body, which is the email, and we need a body, which is the password. And I'm curious, if we send this with nothing, what response we get back? It just tells us we need a body. And so that's why we add this user in here, just so we get something and we can produce this error message, and it's gonna tell us what we need. So you need an email and you need a password in order to sign up right here. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can sign up with a email and a password. So we'll actually just leave this right here and we'll say our user can be phdsecatme.com and this tells us right here, so instead of user, we need an email, so we'll change this to email, and then we are going to need a password, which I'm getting from right here. So just to save from getting a typo, we can just type in password, and we can make the password pass one, two, three, four, and then we can send this and hope it works. We get a 201, the user has been created, so now we should be able to go to login and actually log in. So before we go ahead and log in, I'm going to just copy this so I don't have to retype it all. And we'll just copy this and we're just gonna see if we can use this same post request and go log in. And instead of email, we're gonna need user, our username, just like this. And now if we send this, we can see it tells us that it doesn't work. We might need to catch this in burp send this to repeater, come back over to repeater. We're going to change the request method, paste this in, and we're gonna go username, I typed that wrong, username, just like this. And we might have to change this. I thought we could run it with nothing, but maybe we'll go application type 
JSON because we're sending it JSON like this. And if we send this, still gives us the same error. Okay, since this isn't working, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and we're just gonna say, we're gonna send it with this www form URL encoded and we're just going to change this. So what we will do is delete that and we're going to delete our colons just like our quotes just like this. Instead of the apostrophe, we're gonna need the ampersand just like this and word delete 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 and instead of these colons we're going to need equals and this is going to look really familiar to you if you do any kind of a bug bounty this is really common to see in any kind of a login form this type of encoding and let's try this and it tells us that it worked and i have a few videos on the jwt tokens and that's what we have right here. So we have this bear and this is a JWT token. And I'm not gonna cover this in too much detail because we have in previous videos, but we're gonna need this right here in order to actually log in. So now what we need to do is come back to our proxy and we have this request still intercepted over here. And we'll see if we can get this to work on our first try. And we're gonna have to type in authorization and if you've ever messed with bear tokens, then you know this is how they're sent. I actually remember when I first started in the web application at testing world, if you actually have a bearer token for another account and replace the bearer token with this one, you can actually perform actions as another user if you have their token. But the bearer token, I believe changes like every five minutes, 15 minutes, I think it's a set amount of time. So we have this bearer token anyway over here and we're gonna copy it without the quotes, come back over to our interceptor, paste that in, and we're gonna copy this because we're gonna need it one more time and send, and it didn't work for us, so we're gonna to have to try this again. So the reason this wasn't working is because we're not at the right endpoint right here. We want to authenticate. We're not at the right endpoint right here. We want to authenticate, and there is another directory we need. So if we come back in to Fuff and we let this run, instead of closing out of it like I have been doing, we'll see that we have another directory and we have the docs directory right here. So we can come up here and what we're gonna do is type in docs and we want to intercept this because you have to be authenticated to reach this page. And now if we paste that in and we forward this, I did not go all the way back. We need to go back like this. Now we want to run this. It says we're not authenticated. Thank you. We need to intercept this. And now we paste this in. And then once we reach this page, we will paste in our token again and hit forward and forward. And we should be brought to the docs page. And it has finally loaded for us and we have reached the location we're not supposed to be able to reach. And right here is the user flag. You can hit execute and it will pop up. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stop the video right there because any more than this, and we're kind of getting out of the scope of this video because we're starting to leave the realm of API hacking and we're gonna start looking for some privilege escalation or escalating our privileges or gaining further information within this specific box. And this box can become kind of difficult from this point on, especially if you're new. So we're gonna stop this video right here. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the description and I will try to answer as many questions as I can and possibly make videos on your questions in the future. Thanks for watching.